morning, Jay. Good morning, Ryan. Want to do rapid fire on some players? Sure, rapid fire. Mike Smith starting? Uh, Mike Smith is starting tonight, yeah. Dylan Holloway? Dylan, Dylan Holloway. It's a question with him. Uh, is uh, he an option to go in tonight, and are you considering? He's a healthy and available player for us, and we got a lot of really healthy and available options. Is Kyler Yamamoto healthy or available? Uh, Kyler Yamamoto is not available. Okay. Um, and then maybe just broader picture, trying to keep the picture small. How do you think your group's done the last day or two? I think pretty good. Um, that happens uh, when it's been drilled into you for months, and... Uh, that is our approach, that we're keeping our pitcher small, we're controlling what we can control, and um, we're excited about taking care of today's business. Third row on the left, Mark. Following up on that, um, it's easy to say take one game at a time, but how do you get your players to compartmentalize that? How do you, mm -hmm. do you change the message in any way to try to, like to said, to shrink the picture? Well, I think when you, when you've done it for, this is probably now, I keep saying three months, it's probably four months now. Uh, that's been the message uh, since February 11th. Uh, we walked in here, Dave Manson and I, and we joined uh, with Glenn, Brian, and Jeremy and Dustin. And uh, I remember walking into that initial coaches meeting and saying, listening first of all, and then afterwards it was, we just got to win one hockey game. And you win one hockey game, and then things take care of themselves. And I think if you think of the, you asked about compartmentalizing, that was the word you used. Um, that's chunking things down or breaking it up by pieces. And when you have that ability, which has been ingrained in this team since February 11th, uh, I think you feel good about your options. Second row on the left. Jay, can a team galvanize even more when you're facing this kind of an uphill battle? Yeah, I think um, we've had, we faced two elimination games in our first round series against Los Angeles. And we had one elimination game against uh, Calgary and we performed well in those games. I think uh, when you face what we face, but have the mindset that we have, I think it serves you well. Um, we know where the pressure is in this game. It's not on the team that's um, going to play loose and, and uh, they're going to drive. It's on the team that's going to push to try and close someone out. Stay on the left, Ken. Jay, when looking to replace a guy like Evander who has a specialized skill set, how much weight do you put into role that person's going to play versus familiarity and experience? Yeah, I think um, one of the the messages going back to that February 11th, uh, we, we came up, Dave and I, and we had the idea that we were bullish on the people that we had available to us. We think there's a lot of really good players in our organization. And uh, that, that view has never wavered. We're bullish on the people available to us. We have good depth. And uh, we think uh, we have a lot of really good options to, to ice the lineup tonight. Second row. Hey, Jay. I read. Yesterday you mentioned that you were trying to be optimistic that Evander Kane would be available today. He is not. What do you think of the suspension and maybe what you heard in the player safety video? What I think is immaterial. That was my question. Any more questions for coach? Left side. Jay, how did you like the 11 and 7 after you'd gone four forwards for a while, or four forward lines for a while? Yeah, I thought, I thought uh, Jim, that um, that was probably um, our most complete effort of the series. It was a 2-2 hockey game late in the third period, so I thought it served us well. Um, I keep referencing February 11th. That night we went we went 11 and 7. We feel comfortable with it. We won a lot of hockey games with that alignment, but we also feel good with 12 and 6. We won a lot of hockey games with 12 and 6 as well. I think uh, when you're a coaching staff, you sit down, you want to try and ice the lineup that you feel gives you the best chance on that evening, and both of those alignments I think serve us well. Back left, Gene. Uh, Jay, hypothetical Holloway question, if you'll answer it possibly. But here's a kid with a bright future, has impressed all the way to this level. It's a huge game. What, what does he sort of have um, from his previous experience that you think, if he plays, might be able to help you out in this situation? 
Well, I think we have a lot of really good players available to us, Gene. Um, you're asking about one specifically, about a young one. I think, um, you know, Philip Broberg is a good example of a young player that has a lot to offer, and he's healthy and available to us. Dylan Holloway is healthy and available to us. We have a lot of good veterans that are available to us, all of whom have put in the necessary work to be ready should they get tapped on the shoulder. Um, what I like about that group, I've used the term that we're bullish on them, but they're a group of great teammates. They're as happy when the team wins if they're not in the lineup as, it, as if they were in the lineup. We've got a lot of really good people to choose from. We're going to make the right choice tonight. Any more questions for Coach? Thanks, okay. guys. Thanks.